Today starts a new section, and it's called uh, 2 6 the quadratic formula. So, if you remember correctly, when we were looking back at factoring stuff, um, there were some times where you couldn't factor, where it got real difficult to factor. Uh, there were other times, whenever we were doing uh, completing the square, if you remember with completing the square, if I had a number in front of my x squared that wasn't 1, then I couldn't complete the square. Like if I had a question that said uh, 3x squared plus 6x plus 7, there's no way to complete the square if I have this 3 up here. So then that would leave me with trying to factor, but if it didn't give me a perfect factor, like that one definitely would not have, because there's no way for me to figure out what would multiply to give me 3. That would have to be a 3 and a 1. To get 3x, it would have to be 3x and 1x. Put it that way. And then what would multiply to give me 7? That would have to be a 7 and a 1. But if I put a 7 here and a 1 here, and they would have to both be positive, 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22. That's not 6. If I switch those orders, put a 7 there and a 1 there, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 7 is 10, I'm still not getting 6. So there's no way to factor this equation out, or this quadratic out, and I can't complete the square. So that's the whole reason that the quadratic formula comes in. Now the quadratic formula is kind of hard to remember, <clears throat> but that it, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2f. Even though it's hard to remember, it's probably the best way to solve a quadratic because it doesn't matter whether I can factor it, complete the square, there's no restrictions on the quadratic formula. If there are actual roots, then I can find them. So that's where the quadratic formula is good. As long as you can remember the actual formula itself for solving, then you're in good shape. Now, this is where you guys have an advantage because you're not in school. So whenever you're taking a quiz, if you were here, I would not normally give you the quadratic formula you would have to have it memorized. Now that you're not here, there's no way for me to know whether you're actually staring at it when you take your quiz, or your chapter test, or if you have it memorized. I recommend memorizing it, but, I mean, hey, you'll be fine either way, because you can just look at it from home. Some of you have been using the quadratic formula without knowing it, because, uh, on a couple different occasions, PhotoMath has used the quadratic formula and you didn't realize it and you put it in your homework assignments and I just laughed because I had no idea what it was yet. Okay. Let's see how we can use the quadratic formula. So our first example, quadratic functions with real zeros. Find the zeros of this using the quadratic form. I'm going to go ahead and write it down again, just because I don't have it on this page. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So while you're getting used to this method, I think it's a good habit to get into. To either write your A, B, and C down, or kind of box it in like this. That way you remember stuff like this negative goes with the 16. And then that 27 would be positive because it's a plus in front of it. 
and now you're literally just taking these numbers and plugging them in. x equals negative of a negative 16 makes that a positive 16 plus or minus the square root. This part is important. This is a negative 16. Make sure that it goes inside parentheses, especially when you're typing it into a calculator. So it's negative 16 squared because this is going to give you a positive result. If you just put it in a calculator as negative 16 squared, it's going to take 16 and square it first and then make it negative, which will give you a wrong answer. So then minus 4 times 2 times 27. All over 2 times 2. Now we can start to sim uh, simplify this. 16 plus and minus <clears throat> negative 16 squared is 256. Then I can do 4 times 2 times 27. 4 times 27 gives us 108. 108 times 2 is 216. over 4 gives you x equals 16 plus or minus square root of 40 over 4. Now we're going to figure out what goes into 40, so we're going to simplify this root. 40 is 4 times 10. 4 is a perfect square, so a 2 comes out in front. And the 10 stays inside. The last step for simplifying this would be to see if we can divide these both by 4. And you're not worried about what's under the root only what's in front of the root. So if 16 over 4, that's just x equals 4 plus and minus. Then 2 root 10 over 4, 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half. So this would just be root 10 over 2. That's your final answer. You could get a decimal approximation of this because there's two solutions here when it's 4 plus root 10 over 2 and then 4 minus root 10 over 2. You can get a decimal approximation of this by uh, putting it into Desmos. If we just do the scientific calculator. do uh, 4 plus square root of 10. I don't like that. Make sure to put the, push the arrow key. I don't know why that's doing that. There we go. Over 2. So this would be your decimal approximation, 5.5811, and then you would have to do it for 4 minus as well. And it gives you 2.4188, but you don't even have to do that. Just leave it in the root form.
Anybody have any questions on that one? One. I want you to try this one on your own. Uh, you're just plugging it into the formula. I'll give you about two or three minutes to do it, and then we'll start working on it together. Okay, let's do this one together. Start with my formula. X equals negative B plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a now I'm just plugging my numbers in. x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7 all over 2 times 1 which is just 2 x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root of 9 negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 negative 4 times negative 7 is a positive 28 so that's 9 plus 28 over 2. Negative 3 plus or minus 9 plus 28 is 37. 37 is a prime number, meaning nothing goes into it except 37 and 1. So you're done. That's your final answer. Raise your hand if you got it. Nice. Good job. All right, we'll move on to another one. Again, I'll let you try this one on your own, and then we'll do it together. Okay. So for this one, x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now I'm just plugging my numbers in. Negative b, that's negative of a negative 8, so that becomes a positive 8. Plus or minus square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 10. all over 2 times 1. Start solving this. 8 plus or minus the square root. Negative 8 squared is 64. 4 times 1 times 10 is 40. So 64 minus 40 over 2. gives us x equals 8 plus or minus root 24 mm -hmm. over 2. Break down the 24. That's 4 and 6. 4 is a perfect square. Square root 4 is 2, so 2 comes out in front. x equals 8 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6 over 2. Try to simplify the front. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 
q divided by 2 is 1, so that just becomes 4 plus or minus 1, which we don't have to write in, square root of 6. And that's your final answer.